Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 31. My name's Andy. Today we are going to do some exercises to help us bed in the knowledge from module D, which is about done out dispatch, trait objects, object safety, and patterns that we can follow. And the first exercise is about patterns. It, um, so it's uh, talking about the uh, burger service number, which is a Dutch personal identification number. It's a bit like a social security number. Um, and it, it, it's, it adheres some, to some rules. Uh, so the first exercise we're going to do is a, um, a make, so like wrap it in a kind of a new type. So underneath, maybe it's a string, maybe it's a number. We'll figure that out in a second. Um, but it follows rules. It's not just any old. Um, string or number. Um, so I guess it says it consists of eight or nine digits. So I guess we're probably going to hold it as numbers, but we'll see. And it passes a variant of the 11 check. So here is the 11 check. So first of all, we add, we add a zero to the end. I presume that means on the right, but I'm not actually sure. Um, and then we multiply the first thing, first digit by nine, second digit by eight, and so on. And the last digit we multiply by minus one. And it must be a multiple of 11. Not sure why we multiply by minus one. But there you go. Um, right, so um, we're going to open up this file um, in the exercises section called 1BSN. And then there's basically going to be a list of think BSNs that are valid, a list of BSNs that are invalid. And we need to implement a validate function to make the test validation test pass. Uh, and then we need to implement try from string. Um, we'll see if there's a test for that too. So let's have a look at the code. I've already opened this up in my editor. I'm looking at the lib.rs file. Let's have a look at what else we've got in here. So here are our invalid BSNs. So um, there's a bunch of them, which I guess some of these don't follow the um, the rule and some of them are just not made out of numbers and then some valid BSNs so this this way we can figure out like how this 11 rule works um, so that would be 2 times 1 is 2 what was the rule? Um, yeah so 2 times that plus a load of zeros plus minus one will make three, which is not a multiple of 11. So a little confused there. Oh, do we need to add a zero? Are these are eight digits. Three, four. No, there's nine digits there. So how is that a multiple of 11? Oh, do we, does it, should it be two times 20? Should it be two times 10 instead of two times one? Oh no, I'm, I'm counting them the wrong way. I'm counting them the wrong way. It should be nine times the first one and eight times the second one. I can't do that in my head. Two nines are 18 plus eight makes 26. That's not a multiple of 11. Okay, let's try this again. So the last digit Second last digit is H. Let's multiply that by two and then take away the last digit. So the last digit here is second last digit here is one. Multiply by two, you get two. Take away two, you get zero. So zero is a multiple of 11. Um, same here, same here, same here. So, and then here, multiply this one by two, you get 12. Take away one, you get 11. So it's a multiple of 11. Um, and mul uh, yeah, multiply this by two. You get 14, take away 3 is 11. Okay, so that's how this kind of checksum mechanism works. Um, all right. So let's have a look at the code. Um, so we've got some imports. Then we've got um, this error enum. Basically, so there's only one type of error. It wasn't a valid BSN. Um, and we've got a way of printing out that error. So that's all just preparations. Right, so here's how we're going to represent a BSN. We're going to hold it as a string inside. Fine. Um, and we're going to implement in a second try from string and validate. Um, 
and try from string presumably is going to use valid date inside it. Um, we're going to at some point we're going to implement serialize, but probably not yet. And deserialize, and we've got some tests. All right, so the test for validation just checks for each of the valid ones it comes out as valid, and for each of the invalid ones it comes out as invalid. All right, that seems a decent set of tests for validate. And they told us how to run just the validate test, didn't they? They said, if we just say cargo test, test, validation. We can see just that one test ran and it failed because we hit a to-do. All right, so let's think about how we're going to implement validate. So we've got a str. Um, first of all, we need to check its length. Um, because it can be either eight or nine digits. So that's our first thing. So let's just do if, if the length is eight, well, let's just, first of all, let's just get rid of all cases where, let's match on len, shall we? And um, we've got cases of eight or nine, which are going to be fine. So let's do nothing for now. And all other cases, we're going to um, return an error, which is going to be uh, one of these error types, something like that. Now these have got different types. So I guess for now, no, let's do an OK here, like that. Did that work? Might not like our match having different types. Or have I done this wrong? Can you not do that? I mean, I could do this, right? Oh, I think I wanted eight or nine like that. Yeah, I think the comma is a syntax I've made up. There we go. That'll do. OK. Let's try and run our test. So our test still fails um, because this one is invalid, but it passed validation. That's a very helpful error message, thank you. But maybe some of the invalid ones were counted as invalid. All right, so now we need to add a zero. We weren't completely sure where we add the zero, but I guess the test will tell us. If, if the test keeps failing, we'll realize that we did it wrong. So I guess we add a zero to the end. What's the end? I, I think the end is probably the right. Yeah, that's the end of a string, isn't it? Okay. So we've got two different cases here. One, um, in the eight case, we're going to do one thing. In the nine case, we're just going to return. So we're, what we're going to say is we're going to say, let the like padded BSN equal um, either the BSN itself or a BSN with a zero added on the end. Is this the right way to do this? Maybe we should add, maybe we should convert, uh, yeah, let's convert it to a vec and then, yeah. Let's convert it to a vec of numbers first. Then it'll be easier to add things on the end without it being so awkward. So we actually don't want to do this length check quite yet. The first thing we want to do is turn it into a vec of numbers. So let nums equal. Um, so we're going to walk this thing. And every time we find a non-number, we're going to immediately return. So let's, so let's use a loop instead of, um, instead of some kind of clever uh, mapping function because we need to return from the middle of it. So um, for each character in the characters of BSN, um, we're going to add something to nums if it's a if it's a number. So each of these characters we want to turn into a number. So what methods have we got on? I guess two digits. Well, it's a chart of digit in the given radix, and that's going to be um, it's going to be ten, right? We, we're talking base ten. Let's just figure that out. It's of eight or nine digits. I guess that means we're talking base ten here. 
Okay, so if it if it is a digit, um, then we're fine. Do something. Otherwise, we're going to return an error. Return error, and we don't actually have to say like we probably should say what was wrong with this PSN, um, but we didn't. And this should probably be its own function, this shouldn't it? Um, I'm going to push that digit into our VEC. Like so, let's make a little function for this private function. Where are we here? We're just in input BSN, so we can just write another little function here. Um, let's say um, two digits. I mean, this doesn't need to be in PSN at all. This could probably just be a free function out here. And we could write tests for this if we were um, not happy with the level of coverage we're getting from the, the validate function. Yeah, so it takes in a string. Which, I mean, it isn't actually, a, it doesn't actually have to be a, be a BSN, but let's just say it is. So this can be a VEC of U8 because the digits are always going to be numbers between 0 and 9, inclusive. Okay, so all of this stuff goes in here, and it actually returns a result, doesn't it? Either a VEC of U8 or one of our errors, like so. We better return nums at the end. Okay, nums. And this should be a VEC of U8, which we can just do here. Oh no, the problem is that digit could, digit should be. Can we just do that? We know that the digit here is going to be no bigger than a U8 because it's zero, it's zero to nine inclusive. So we're okay with just casting it here. Okay, so we've got a two digits function. Let's just test that two digits function. Let's do this properly, shall we? Should have tested it before we wrote it. There we go. Test two digits. Um, um, two digits on number string produces vec. Let's say that. Let's make it a string of eight or nine digits just to make um, the test more realistic. Let so let's just say assert equal. Um, it's going to be two digits of um, four, six, seven, three. Four, three is good because there's a repeat in there just in case that had some kind of effect. It's going to equal a vector of four, comma, six, comma, seven, comma, four, comma, three. Can you see how writing this little test, if we can make it work right, oh, that should be unwrap. Um, this little test is going to make us feel really happy that the code we just wrote is actually correct. We don't have to worry, oh, have I missed something, messed something up. Now, let's just say, uh, test digits on non-number string produces error. So let's stick a letter in here. This should produce error. Error uh, invalid BSN, like so. We need to import the error type. Doesn't like it, it doesn't like uh, it, can't compare results. So let's say, um, give me the error type out. Is that what I want? I want to unwrap error. Yeah, unwrap error, like so. So we know it's an error, so we can unwrap error. It, this will panic if it's not an error. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I guess we need to say assert. Uh, we can assert matches. Do we have that? 
No, I don't want to bring a certain mat matches in because that's some kind of other crate or something. So I guess we have to do if let invalid PSN equals this. In fact, now we can just not unwrap the error. We can just say this. Um, so if this thing wasn't it was the error type, then we just do nothing. Otherwise, we panic. And there isn't a way of saying if it doesn't match in in this kind of setup. So um, was not the error we expected. Something like that. Um, and then here is just like uh, do nothing. I guess we expected this. Ugly, but it works. All right, so how are we going to run these tests? Just cargo test. We'll run some other tests we don't want, but that's fine. So test two digits. They Both of these pass, which is a little bit worrying. Let's make one of them fail. Um, that failed, as we expect. What if this one passed? I mean, you know, failed to fail. Then it's complaining at us, saying... Um, was not the error we expected. Right, so uh, everything we just did works as we expected. Two digits works. Right, so we're back to implementing validate based on two digits. So we'll get hold of our digits. So by putting this in a separate function, we now allow this digits thing to be immutable because um, we needed a mutable vec to implement it, or at least that's the way I chose to implement it because I wanted this return in a for loop. Um, but now digits is immutable, which just feels nice. Okay, so that uh, we can question mark because it returns a result. So if two digits went wrong, we immediately return. Otherwise, we've now got a vector of the right length. Um, and we can now do our validation of length based on the length of digits. And if digits is length 8, we can add another digit. Oh, so we actually need it to be mutable again. Uh, like so. Let's make this mutable. Um, if it's 9, then there's nothing to do. Uh, let's put this in curlies as well if it lets us. No, it doesn't want us to do it. Okay. So, basically, if we've got 8 digits, add an extra one. If it's 9, we're fine. Otherwise, an error. Uh, so now we have a 9-digit vec. So now we can start calculating the um, uh, should we wrap this in a function as well? Um, yeah, but we won't test it. Normally I would test this, but I think we're going a bit crazy. So let's just say let digits equal um, check length and extend. Well, let's say um, uh, assure length 9 on digits, uh, question mark it because it's going to return a result. So let's have another little function that does that. Fun assure length 9 takes in a, a vec, so digits. It's going to actually consume this vec, so we can make this non-mutable again. This is why I made it consume it. Takes in a, a vec of u8 and it returns another vec of u8. It happens to be the same one, but um, we don't necessarily know that. So, basically... Oh, it's a tensor result because we've got to check the, um, um, the correct length. And we're going to have this be mutable just inside our function here. Like so. I'm going to add one to digits and return digits. With any luck, if I've done it right, oh, we have to say what type of error comes back from result. Yeah. So, um, now we've kept the mutability to just within this function again. So now we've got a, uh, a vec of digits which is definitely nine long. So now we can check the... Um, um, what's it called? The 11 check. Should we call it the elf proof? 
Let's do let's call it the elf proof. Elf proof on the digits. And in fact, that can just we can just return the result of running our new function we're calling elf proof. Sorry for the pronunciation, everyone. All right, so this is going to take in. I mean, it can take it could take in. It could take it in by value or by reference here. We don't really mind. It returns the same thing as the function above, which is a result of uh, unit and er the our special error. That needs to be fun. Okay, now we're going to implement this algorithm, which is just nine times the first one and so on down to the second last one. So um, I think we can make a range. What should we do? Let's not let's not over let's not stretch ourselves by trying to do something overly clever. By the way, I don't think we need tests specific tests for this elf proof because um, really, the validate tests are kind of completely covering this, hopefully, if we do it right. So let sum equal zero. We're going to loop through the first um, what is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits. So for the first Eight digits. No, let's do for a digit in digits zero to eight. And we know that those exist because um, we've guaranteed that digits is of length nine. So let's just say this digits must be length nine. So we might want to, like, if this was going to be exposed somewhere publicly. We would have to check this and panic or something. I mean, we are going to panic if it goes wrong. Um, but uh, um, uh, not a very nice panic. So we'd either have to like, I mean, we could just return and yeah. So essentially, what's happening here is we're going to panic if this is not. Um, can we do this? No, no, what I mean is, what I mean is this, a slice of the VEC. Yeah, um, we're going to panic if the, this um, slice can't be taken or if we, when we look for digit number nine, um, or rather digit number eight, uh, well, this is the ninth digit, which is index number eight. Um, we're going to panic if that goes wrong. Um, and that's okay because we've said, like, the part of the contract of our function is it must be exactly nine long um, but if this code was in any way going to be used by someone else we should probably return a result um, if the length is wrong instead of I tell you what I tell you what why don't we just do that just uh, check it again why not if digits dot len given that we've got a result type uh, already so it's very easy code uh, like it, this it's a waste of processor time don't go be wrong um, but it's no problem to just type in this. Now we don't need to, well, I guess we do. We can say, we still need probably that comment saying, um, returns an error if digits is not length nine. All right. Uh, okay, so we've now saved ourselves from panics. So now we're definitely not gonna panic here. It surely feels a bit better. And the sum plus equals uh, multiplier times digit, where multiplier is starts off as nine. So we could probably do this much cleverer with like some kind of zip of some kind of thing. Can we do that? We could, couldn't we? We could do we could do some kind of zip of this and nine two. We could just do nine dot dot one. No, I like dot equal. So we're saying 
We're saying loop through the digits, um, uh, the, the uh, things in digits from zero to eight exclusive. So let's use. this just to make it the same type of thing as this so this should be it like where zip is it in iter tools no it's all right it's all right in normal iter and this is going to give us back a pair of the digit and the multiplier do we like this more than just working it out manually i think we probably do so the first chunk of digits up to and including number seven from zero to seven and then a multiplier that is a number from 9 down to 2. Ah, oh, now our problem here is that I don't think this range can go backwards like this. So let's make some mutable. So I don't think this is going to work because I don't think ranges can go backwards. Um, so let's just see what happens when we run this. Uh, let's just run test validation. So it doesn't like it because it's this is invalid. So all right. So so far we're not seeing any problems. Let's write a little test that just checks this works because I'm really not sure. So this is just a throwaway test. For backwards range, we could probably look this up somewhere, but this is probably easier. I don't think this works. So it's going to be. Um, a range from say three to zero dot collect I guess is going to equal a vec of three two one zero right if this works then this works this needs some brackets First of all, let's go the right way around. Check I haven't messed this up. Yeah, the problem here is it um, type annotations needed. That's all it is. Right. So let's just say collect it into a vec. Okay, this should fail. Backwards range. Okay, so now let's go backwards and see whether backwards ranges work. No, it doesn't like it. So we can't do backwards ranges. That's why I started writing this code a different way. Now there may well be a way of getting a backwards range, but it just feels like I'm over complicating my code in order to try and be clever and use this zip. So let's stop imp importing zip. and do it the dumb way. So let multiplier equal 9. We'll just loop through the digits. Because this bit's fine, right? Looping through the first eight things in digits is totally fine. And then multiplier is just going to get one smaller. Uh, which means it needs to be mutable. Which I guess is one re good reason why we might want to um, e do the zip thing so we didn't have to have multiplier be mutable. Um, but we've already got some mutable, so we're already writing a kind of mutable style algorithm. Now, so we're, what we haven't done is actually checked whether this is divisible by 11. So if sum percent 11 equals 0, we're okay. Otherwise, and again, I really want to say what type of error happened here, but we kind of can't. Right, is it as simple as that? No, no, we've missed a bit out. We've missed a bit out. We've got to multiply, we've got to add minus one times the last digit. Sum plus equals digits bracket seven times minus one. Okay, 
but digits are is a vec of u8 so you can't multiply it by minus one so as u32 no i32 Some should be in I32. And now when we've done this, we need to say digit as I32 here, I guess. Star digit as I32. Like so. Right. So this might work. Let's try it. Oh, obviously there's no test called backwards range. Test validation. It failed because 12, nine digits, ending with one, two, did not pass validation. So why not? I guess we write a individual unit test just for that case. Okay, so... Where's our test? So just before the full test of validation, let's do our own little test of validation. Test... It looks to me like we this is the first one, right? So we've just done something silly. Validate. Let's just call this 12, shall we? So assert that when you validate, um, which I think is done by calling validate of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it should come out true, right? Oh no, it should just be, we just have to call validate, right? And if it, oh no, we have to sort of unwrap it or something. So let's do test validate 12. Fails. And it just says invalid BSN. So we're not finding out why. So let's put in some logging that tells us why. So where did the first, so first place we could fail is in two digits. Um, so let's log here. Um, is there an e print len? Yeah. Um, this is non digit character. Um, what is the is ch? Something like that. Are we allowed to do that? Use a semicolon at the end. All right, so that was if two digits failed. What if um, we were the wrong length? Then it would be wrong length. Wrong length. Let's just print out digits, shall we? Um, like this. And then the thing that I suspect has gone wrong is that the sum has come out wrong. Sum not divisible by 11. Um, let's say, let's print out sum, but also print out digits just to be sure. Um, using debug print. Okay, how's this going to go? So, the sum's not divisible by 11. The sum comes out as 1. And the digits are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 digits. Um, so, I feel like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. Oh, I've have I picked the seventh one when I should have picked yeah yeah. <laughs> I confused myself with um by saying zero to equal seven. I then thought the seventh one is the one that we haven't picked yet. So I think I'm gonna unconfuse myself slightly by saying pick digits zero to before eight and then use number eight as the final one. I think I feel that's easier. Uh, still a bit confusing. Okay, now test validate 12 works, so let's try test validation. Test validation works. All right, we have um, our validation code working as we expect. Um, and so it said implement validate. 
to make the validation test case pass. Now implement try from string. And I, I guess if we run all the tests, it, it will test try from string. No, it's also testing SERDI, which we're not going to do yet. So let's implement try from string, but I guess we need a quick test for try from string. So this will be the last thing we do in this video, I think. Test try from string. And we'll stick a couple of test cases in here. I don't like doing it, but I'm just doing it for speed's sake. So, um, so first of all, we'll do one that, that validates correct, that, that validates, that fails validation. No, it should be error. Um, we're going to do BSN, try from string. Something that's invalid, so let's just try something like that. Uh, and if that doesn't work, we're going to panic. Um, should have failed. Should have failed validation. Put some account at the end there, just for my sake. And then let OK um, my BSN. Equal BSN try from string. Um, of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. Else we'll panic saying, um, should be okay. Should be okay. Um, and now we guess we need to check what or BSN looks like, right? But I guess um, it should be identical to what we were given. So assert equal my BSN. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, like that. And uh, like, how do we compare a BSN with something? So I think BSN has a display, so I think we can call two string on it. Is that right? Now we've got a display for error. We've got an inner. So we need a way of examining what's in a BSN. So I guess we can implement display for it. Or there's this SERDI stuff. Like we could implement like turning it into serializing it into a string. For now, let's implement display. I think that'd be easier. Simple display. So this allows us to do two string on it for BSN. Let my editor put the function signature in. F dot. So it's slightly weird if you're not used to it how um, the implementing two string actually ends up with us um, calling methods on this formatter object. Um, this should be, I guess, we just return, right still returns the result itself, so um, we can just return the answer from that. Um, yeah, so in order to implement toString, what you actually do is implement display, which has a format method, which takes in a formatter and you call methods on the formatter to send, you know, string or bytes or whatever to this formatter. Um, it's much more efficient than turning it into a string and everything inside gets turned into a string and lo there's lots of strings getting created here. There's just one formatter with stuff getting appended to it. That's why we do that. But now that display has been implemented, we now have a two-string method, which means our test can call dot two string. And we can, and that gives us back a string, which now we can now compare against. A, um, they should have a semicolon, which we can now compare against a str. Okay, because a cert eek kind of does the magic for us of letting us compare a string with a str. So let's run our tests. This, the serdy test will still fail, but also our try from string will fail because we haven't implemented yet. So now let's go and implement try from string, which is going to be a simple matter of, well, let's make it, make our test fail first by accepting everything. So let's just say, okay, self, um, in a, what's this called? Um, 
Like so. Just like accept everything. Just make a BSN with um, this thing inside it. So now it's it's creating BSNs, but it's not checking whether they're all right. It says should have failed validation. So we need to validate it before we do it. So validate takes in a str, whereas this takes in anything that can be two stringed. So I guess the first thing we need to do is turn it into a string. Then inner equal BSN dot two string, just as we did there. Now inner can be passed to validate, like so. Inner, and then we can just, if everything is fine, we just return. Okay, inner, this needs a question mark on it because if, it, if the validation failed, we should return an error. I think it's as simple as that. Let's try it. It worked. The only failing test we've got now is the SERDI test, which I guess we're going to get onto. Okay, so that was exercise D1A. Let's look at D1B. That should be, I guess. Um, uh, visitor with setting. So we need to implement serialize and deserialize to support serialization and deserialization of BSNs. So normally we would just hash derive um, serialize and deserialize, but in this case that's going to come out looking wrong. We want it to look like uh, basically just a string. So, and similarly the other way around. We want just a string to be able to deserialize into a BSN. Um, but this time, like, check it's a valid BSN. Okay, so we might need to look up these links to figure out how to implement the traits. But let's have a look at the tests and the code that we've already got. So the tests are... Um, these are my tests. So test third A uh, is the one that we uh, haven't got passing yet. We've actually just run it and it fails. So, let's look at test setting. Um, so, take, so create a BSN from a string, and then turn it into a string, and it should come out with uh, quotes around it, because it's a JSON string. Um, and also, if you give a JSON string to set and turn it into a BSN, it should come out as uh, equal to one that we created directly from a string. And if you create one that doesn't validate correctly, then it should be an error. All right, so in order to do that, we need to implement serialize and deserialize. Um, now, let's see if we can do this without looking it up in the documentation. So I think for serializing, it's going to be pretty simple. So we're implementing the serialized trait. Like, like I said before, normally you would just, before the struct, you would just have... Uh, let's, let's just write it. Normally you would have hash derive deserialize like this, and it would just work. But we're not going to do that because of what we said about we don't want it to come out looking where it would if we implemented it that way. So I think we can just send a string serialize str, I guess it is. Yeah, got to be serialized str because there's no serialized string. Um, and it's just going to be self dot inner, I guess. And I think the, that will return the right type of result. And we're all fine. So, um, that might work. Now have we got a just serialization part of the test that will check whether that works? Yeah, so hopefully this assertion on 182 should now pass. Um, Previously, we didn't get there. So now we're failing on... Uh, you so that looks like that worked, because now it's trying to use the deserialize, which is later in the code, I believe. So I think that worked. So deserialize is more difficult than serialize. Um, we have to have this structure called a visitor. 
Um, now, this is the stuff I'm not very familiar with. Um, but we have the struct called a visitor. And it says, to do, override the visitor visit to validate the input and output of an UPSN. All right, so we don't need to override all methods. So we're implementing visitor for BSN visitor. Um, and I guess visitor has that visit star. So let's have a look at visitor. So there's this expecting, and what does this do? Format a message stating what data this visitor expects. Okay, so this data, this visitor expects to receive a string. So what we should do is, in expecting, we should say, um, like what we expected to receive, I guess. Okay, so it's just all right. It's just like a text error message. Okay, maybe we do that first then. So. Oh no, it's already done. I apologize. It's already done. Um, so we were expecting a string like this. All right, so back to looking for what these visit methods look like. So we've got visit blah, visit blah. So we, all we want is visit str, I guess. Visit. And we'll think about how this code actually works once we've got it working. So visit str. Looks like this. Takes in a str and returns a result. So let's just copy that. So what it says is the input contains a string. The lifetime of the string is okay. So we need to, if we're going to do anything with this string, we need to copy it, which I think Rust would kind of enforce on us anyway. Okay. So we're making this visitor, and then um, we then need to tell the deserializer to like. I guess visit the visitor. How do you use the? Oh, do we use the serialize str and pass in the visitor? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. So this is. Um, oh, we haven't actually constructed an instance of BSN visitor yet. Okay, so let's construct BSN visitor and pass it in. Like something like that. Lose the to do. Um, some of these types need to be imported. So uh, this should be s colon colon error. I'm guessing. And then oh no, it should we be it should probably be d. Where yeah, where d yeah, because d is the type yeah yeah okay, and d. Probably, maybe, D unexpected as well. No, oh, I thought that was just going to work. Okay. So let's look at what this, um, what, what the error type is in here. Uh, oh, actually, no, let's go back to where we were. Look at this visit str. Here it is. Now, error is sedi uh, de error. So let's just use that. Sedi de error. And probably same for this. Something's making me want to type underscores there. So, and this should also be sadly D error, right? Okay, our, yeah, our red lines have gone. So we're starting to look like we've got reasonable code. Um, we've provided, Oh, this should return the result of that deserialized struct call, I reckon, because that will return some kind of result that matches the type of this, if we're lucky. So we, basically, we've got a deserialized method, but it's not as simple as... And serializing is very simple, right? Like, you've got a BSN, and you want to create a string, um, so you just send some information to the serializer, and the serializer knows what to do. Um, 
with it and it and it turns that into JSON or whatever type you're serializing to. Deserializing is more complicated. In this case, you've got like a kind of unknown sequence of input and you need to do stuff with it that creates the PSN. So what we need to do is create a, vi a visitor which can receive strings and give that visitor to the deserialized str method of deserializer, I think. Um, or maybe this should be like deserialize anything or something. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see if this works. And then we should give it something that isn't a string and see what happens when it goes wrong, whether it, it prints that error message that it was supposed to print or whether we should have done some kind of deserialize any or something. Anyway, you give it a thing which is able to know what to do with the input it's expecting. In this case, um, visit str. Um, and the at the moment this is just returning an error saying that's like the implementation that we got from inside like the default implementation of visit str is to return an error saying I wasn't expecting a string so we don't want that instead we want to do something useful with this string which I guess is construct a BSN yeah because the result type of visit str is itself a self value the self value is a BSN so we want to return in the in the happy case we want to return a BSN um, of V and in the unhappy case when it doesn't validate we want to return an error but it's the wrong type of error so I guess we want to do map error so, I mean, I guess we probably don't even care what the error is. We just want to say that this is going to be a SERDI D error and then some kind of thing here like um, custom. So I guess it's a custom type. And the custom type is going to take in a message and the message is going to be um, invalid BSN or something like that. Mm, we should like make this format nicer. Okay, so we don't need this thing. That was just to help us know about errors. Um, oh, now, as usual, my cargo format is formatting lines longer than I like them right here, so. We could sort that out if we need to. But let's try our test now. Oh, look, they all pass. Um, okay, so I guess what I wanted to do was just check that the error type, is, uh, like error message is what I expect. So let's um, get hold of it and just assert something about it. Uh, is there a, like two string? Let's just see what's in there for now. Run our test again. Invalid BSN. And it's even printed wrong length. Yeah, I think uh, that, that's because I added a debug. I should probably remove my debug message now. Yeah, I guess because there's no, it doesn't actually, like what we ideally have is better errors here that tell us that this was the, the type of invalid BSN it was, was wrong length. So let's leave our log messages in. All right, so um, I guess we can extend our test to match what we know the error message is. There it is. Like so, and our test should pass again. All right, so we've done exercise one. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and um, next time we'll get on with exercise two. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, etc.